well, I'll say that 20 seconds. Apparently the sound came on and then I stopped. So I'm just going to give it two seconds. Let me know you're back with me. Waiting, don't you just love technology? Or third party apps, actually. You've got to love those as well. So, everybody will need to refresh their pages and come back. Come back, come back, come back. Yay! Hey, Ellie! Amazing. I'm going to give it a while. Just everybody who was watching pop your comment and let me know you're back so that I don't keep whizzing on. So annoying, literally, as you all said, the sound was back, I cut you off. Darn it. Sauce, folks. Um, but thanks for coming back to me. And you just gotta love, you just gotta love tech. Well, actually, this is a, um, hey, Sean, thank you. Uh, let's wait for a couple of other people. So I know there was, Becky, Becky is watching, Sarah's back, woohoo! Hey Sarah. Okay, if the sound drops off again, I won't be so hasty in running away. Yay, hey Pippa! Uh, yeah, I won't be so hasty in running away next time. It must have been a glitch, I don't know why or what happened there, but I certainly didn't change anything. And all the signal looks wonderful this end, so must be BeLive having a moment. Um, but yeah, if it does happen, just give me some alerts and I will wait and then we'll I don't know, I just clicked some buttons again, just, and it came back on. Cool, okay. Um, so we've got Ellie, we've got Sean, we've got Sarah, we've got Pippa. Becky, are you back with us? Because I know you had some questions. Um, hopefully you'll be back. Let everybody catch up. Um, so we were talking about um, getting your business account back up and running and started. So back up and running, I'm like in my head here, looking at the live, getting your business account on Instagram, it happens, don't worry. Thank you, Sarah. Um, yeah, so we're talking about getting your Instagram for business account set up properly. We got onto that, so let me do the right one here. Yay! Um, cool, so I'm just gonna make sure now that I'm in the corner, you can all still hear me. Okay, so let's crack on. Uh, don't forget to add contact details for your business. Um, how do you find people that you are interested in? Okay, so finding, following and saving posts are some of the ways that people can interact with you, but also ways that you can discover content and potential customers for yourselves, okay? Um, so to find people, topics and brands, you use the search. So click on the search and you click in here, uh, topics of interest, hashtags, names, etc. And then you'll come up with a suggested uh, feed. You can uh, of top, so that'll be everything, all these in one. But you'll also be able to toggle across to people, tags, that's hashtags, uh, and places, so locations. Um, the search results that you get up here are based on a variety of factors. That's including who you've already connected to, things that you've already liked and shared on Instagram. So it is a tailored search result. Um, you can follow the accounts such as businesses in your industry, in your uh, in influencers, in your field. That will start to give you a curated uh, home feed of what you like to see. And you can also save posts that you like and as well as saving posts that um, people tag you in. So as you start to do some research on Instagram, for some inspiration of what you should be posting, try to save some content so that you don't lose it when you continue scrolling. OK, 
Okay. Lovely. So the diagram of a post, again, this is, you know, I appreciate, hopefully this isn't too uh, basic for some people, but this is the diagram of a post. So you'll have your um, profile image and name, as we mentioned before, this is your handle, and your this appears in the top left uh, of, your, of every post that you make on your grid. So the image, the collection, or the video that you share will then be in the middle. And then the caption of your post appears at the bottom. Now, I get a lot of questions, should this be short, long, intermediate? Um, I find user-wise uh, difference between Facebook and Instagram is people do click more and like to read a lengthier post and stay engaged with a lengthier post. But you do need to make sure that what you're writing is relevant and useful in order to do that. Okay, so that's the... At the diagram of a post, that's what it looks like and how it works, which brings us on to hashtags. So if you've got your hashtag questions at the ready, now's your time to post them into the comments box. Um, you can technically add up to 30 hashtags, but we don't really recommend that unless you've got a real uh, bunch of 30 targeted, well-researched tags that make sense for you to use. Um, You'll want to use hashtags on Instagram to help potential followers and customers find you. So the, the discoverability set, um, element of Instagram is key to helping you grow your audience and be a part of conversations that matter to your business. Um, so you use and create hashtags, as hopefully some of you know, by putting the hash in front of a word um, or a phrase, but it can't have spaces in it. And you can either put that in the main text of your message or pop them at the end. And you'll see some people add it with some like dots underneath and space them out. Other people will add it as a comment. Um, in this example, they've just put hashtags, but I would always recommend having your caption and having your tags either within the caption or my personal preference is to put them uh, at the end of a caption. Okay, so searching, when, once you create these hashtags, also use these hashtags, when people search this particular tag in their explore feed, your content will potentially be shown. The more niche and um, kind of targeted the hashtag is, the more likely it is that your post will be found. Something like hashtag food is massive. And if there's gonna be millions of posts attached to a hashtag, um, it's not likely that it will draw you a decent community it, because if you're a food shop in Wiltshire, for example, and you then start to attract a worldwide following, maybe of people searching food, then you're not going to get in, in front of your ideal target market. Uh, so you need to be a bit more specific when you create and search using hashtags, for example, um, food as so they go on to say here use something like food which has millions of posts attached to it and millions of posts will appear when people are searching something like food singapore or food wiltshire food witswinden bristol uk scotland um and or food uh, organic food england something like that and that's more targeted uh, so some specificity, specific, specificity, specificity, <laughs> specificity will help you to refine um, your search results and will help you to refine your hashtag strategy. Using hashtags that are specific to your business and the interests that uh, your community follows are recommended. So have a, a couple of strategies. Having a branded, so that means Hashtag, a bunch of hashtags that will represent your business, a bunch of hashtags that will represent your uh, customers' interests as well, mixed too. Um, I always uh, recommend investing some time to do some research on hashtags. What you're doing is uh, I would brainstorm some keywords and terms that are relevant to your business. Then I would search them out, again, using the Explore tab, and start to click through the content 
that's on those hashtags and see if there is an engaged community there. By engaged community, I mean, are posts, are posts building conversation? Are they getting comments and interaction? If they are, that's a good sign that it's a good hashtag to use. If they're not getting any conversation, then I would avoid it. So uh, there's no exact, I did mention you can add up to 30. There's no exact science as to how many hashtags or even mentions to you. So another suggestion is to tag people and use other people's handles in your posts. Um, so yeah, it's just, you, know, you just need to be as specific as possible with the hashtags that you're using. Um, quality over quantity is key here. So do your research. Okay. So Becky had a question for us earlier on about uh, being consistent with your feed. And one of the key things for you guys to succeed on Instagram is to be creative with your feed. Uh, it's a creative tool. You need to think about, uh, you need to use the tools, sorry, that are available to you on Insta in order to be that creative content creator or the C's. So be consistent with your look and feel. It's helpful for your customers if your business um, has is recognizable when they find you and they scroll through your feed. Um, <clears throat> so as you think about your brand's personality, you'll want your photos and your videos to match that ideally. We're a service-based business. Our pictures don't have a specific um, look or feel in terms of the grid maybe and the setup. But we always have the we always apply the same filter and try to stick to the same angles that when we take our pictures. So you can, as I said, pick a layout, a style like this. These guys with um, the, uh, this hair studio. So having consistent looks and feels can be done by simply using a consistent color scheme or filter, the type of shot shot that you take, the type of product that you shoot or the people that you use in it, or whatever suits your brand really. So have a think about how you can make it consistent. Authenticity is really key. Um, you need to allow your customers to understand who you are behind, um, who, who it is behind the business. I worked with a customer recently who was a, a very new business startup and all, all the content that had been shown on their Instagram account to date was really impersonal, but didn't give us any feeling about the brand or who they were behind it. And that's really key for small businesses and really key in the early stages of setting up an Instagram account. So <clears throat> think about what your audience are interested in. Think about your business story, post things that honestly represent you, your journey, your business. Um, Think about the inner workings of your business as well um, or random things that support your brand and your look and feel because that will resonate. OK, so um, with this slide, what we usually cover, we've talked about hashtags. Um, one of the other ways that you can get out there and get discovered is to in encourage people to use your Twitter handle. So in your offline promotions, make sure you publish your Instagram handle, maybe incentivize customers to use your handle, mention other businesses in your content in the hopes that they will respond and use yours and see if you can develop any of those partners, uh, partnerships with people as well that are locally, locally that are local to you. Okay, so top tips then for creating content. Um, I can see we're getting on with time, so I don't wanna keep you here all afternoon. Um, and, I, and I know this sounds uh, easier said than done, but you know, taking photos and videos really doesn't have to be hard. You can just use your mobile phone. But here are some tips for you to think about when you are using your phone uh, to create images. Always check for distractions. I always recommend using the camera outside of your app as well before you put it into Instagram, as opposed to opening and taking the photo within the app. That's my little top tip. That's check, so check for distractions. 
Look for contrasting colours. That can always work really nice, and that's a really simple and easy way to make your feed pop. And cool patterns as well. Cool patterns are a great and easy way if you're around something or somewhere with patterns, or you can create patterns. Um, another top tip for you is I like to use, because we're service-based, um, if you've got any products or stuff and we, and we don't have anything sexy or colourful, I like to use wallpaper as a background or a bedding. It's a little top tip. Uh, lighting, so always consider your lighting uh, for whether or not it's, uh, in terms of is it creating a, a bad image for you, bit bad image quality, but also is that in light of your, is, does that work for your brand? Do you want to stick with natural light, soft light, hard light, or night light? So think about um, how the different types of light will affect the uh, overall outcome of the, um, of the shot that you're taking. And try with different angles as well. So many people just point and press with their cameras, but actually if you just change an angle slightly, it adds so much more depth or can add a lot of depth and a different viewpoint uh, to your pictures. So play with angles. As well as playing with editing tools. Okay, so again, in order to create some consistency, you don't have to use all the editing uh, suites, all the filters and stuff, but you can um, if you desire to. So when you add in your picture, um, here it's saying for you to take the photo within the app if you were to add one through your library. You then get your filters and you can scroll right and left to discover more. Pick one, I tend to stick with the same one on our business feed. And then you can edit filters as well. So this little button down here allows you to tone up or tone down that image so you can see how it changes. So have a play with those. It's a good good opportunity right now to set up a, um, a Finsta, so they call them fake Instas, or your own test Insta um, and get and get playful with, with the photos and photography and the filters and the assets that they've got. Uh, customer experiences are a really good way to get content onto your feed. Uh, it's really cool if you can get or repurpose images of your customers using your product or service. We like to share lots of pictures of people watching our talks or taking part in our, um, our taking part in our lives. We like to take screenshots. Um, that's really useful. That's an, an engaging way to open up our business onto Insta. Uh, Sean. Cool, what about music? How do we add it without copyright restrictions? So you will need to use um, free to write, so com uh, Creative Commons um, music. You'll be able to find loads of sites out there. I think YouTube has its own library actually of music that can be used license free. Um, if you're creating stories on your personal profile, because uh, I don't have this feature for businesses, you actually have a music a sticker that has a list of um, songs that you can use because they give the royalties uh, back to the artists, so you can do that. But yeah, if you, you if you, and if you're using a editing tool to create your video, that's going to go onto the grid. You will need to use um, license-free um, music. But when you add a video file into Instagram. It won't allow you to put a backing track on it, if that makes sense, hopefully, Sean. Let me know, we can um, put some links anyway to uh, sites that allow you to use royalty-free um, music. Thank you very much. Any other questions, guys? Just keep them coming in. Uh, we are getting towards the end of our, our weekly webinar. Um, if you, we so just mentioned like some and ideas for content, customer experiences, reach out at this time. You can, you know, use Instagram or use email to reach out to your customers and ask them to share a picture on Instagram of them wearing something that you sell or interacting with something that you offer. Um, if you are a product or, um, or even for services, show behind the scenes, show us how that 
creation, um, how that service is created or that product is created, it adds a lot of interest and intrigue to your posts as opposed to having just, this is my product, buy it. And you can see the difference in these um, examples here, right? One way to create videos, Sean just mentioned video, uh, and we know video really uh, stands out in newsfeed. So Boomerang and Time Lapse are two Instagram apps that allow you to create um, really engaging videos like we've got here. And this is a little personal favorite of mine, and as Sean is on the call, every time I get the, a, a copy of the Business Exchange magazine, this is kind of my go-to video creation. They're, they're free, you can download those onto your phone. Um, jobs are good. In. So that brings us on, before we finish up, onto Instagram stories, okay? Uh, Instagram stories are fun, they're playful, they last 24 hours. They're supposed to be that unfiltered content. So if you think about your grid as your shop window, um, think about stories as your behind the scenes and in inside your shop yeah it's the people that make the shop or the people and i say shop window as every business has a shop window um yeah think of stories as the people who make up that business how you operate day to day and um, what it's like to work there so it's informal and they also have some really cool built-in creative tools so they've got stickers face filters you can mention and tag people. If you've got a personal account, you can also add music, like I just mentioned, and you can also poll uh, your viewers and your audience in stories. They are so super fun. And you can see here the difference between stories and the grid is that you get a full mobile experience with stories. It's, it's very personal and very one-to-one. -one. Um, and yeah, it just, it, they make you smile. And what we're seeing now as well, the impact of stories is that when you open up your Instagram app, stories sit at the top of the feed. People are tending now to scroll across as opposed to scroll up. So as a business, adopting stories is quite key strategically. And then last but not least, a quick mention, and I always talk about insights, but now that you've set up or you've decided to convert your, per, your personal profile on Instagram into a business account, make sure you check your insights. So if you click into the onto your profile in the top right, you'll have a little um, up here somewhere, it'll be a little analytics bar. You click on that and it will actually tell you, you know, out of your feed posts, how many engagements or interactions you've had in a week. Um, and it will also tell you who your audience are and how much you've been posting. So you can then start to compare like what's working the best and looking at these four posts as an example there Jasper's markets flat lay pictures do really well as do pictures with probably some inspiration of, of product what you can do and people in it as well so looking at your insights will really allow you to understand what time of day you should be posting what like sort of content your audience likes and engages with and guess what? The great thing is, is that if you learn that something doesn't work, you can stop doing it. And then you can start something else and try it again and learn and, and create. Um, so, yeah, that's your activity. That's what it looks like when you scroll over. So it'll tell you um, how many profile visits you've had, how many people have clicked on your little call to action button. And then you click over to audience it will show you like the age range, gender of people. And that's useful because you should be using that data to, to adapt how you write and what you're sharing. Or if you're, already, if you're trying to target men who are 13 to 17 in this instance, then you know you're doing something wrong because you're not attracting that type of person. Or you think, okay, actually I've learned that my audience is majority women in this age bracket. So how do we use that information to adapt our business or service? Okie dokie. Um, let's have one quick. So Sean, uh, where do you get insights from? Um, da -da -da you have to have a business account first. So if you've got a personal account already, you'll need to um, 
convert it into a business profile. Sarah, I'll come back, sorry, Sean. Uh, Sarah, is there any external story creation apps you would advise using, i.e. not with an Instagram? Yeah, you can use Canva. They have uh, templates in there for stories. There is also an app called Story Swag. If anyone heard of Word Swag, they've, we've got one now called Story Swag, free to download, um, and you can create templates for stories in there as well. Uh, so, Sean. Um, without going all the way back to the start of my slide deck, when you, let's see if I can do it from here. So when you open up Instagram, click on your bottom right onto your profile. Okay. Then you'll see all your details here and your grid underneath in the top right in this little box here, you should see like a graph that looks like similar to this. Click on that and it will um, take you to your insights section. Okay, but you do need a business account first. Okay, so coming to the end. Wow, that was a really long session today. Thanks everybody for staying with me and coming back. Really appreciate it. We'll be here again next week, but here's our key takeaways for you this week. Use a business profile so you can access all the tools. Make sure you use, uh, make sure you share your business's unique personality and stories. Um, be creative with the functionality that Instagram offers and make sure you test and iterate. It's okay to change stuff. Learn from what your analytics are telling you. Okay. Phew. So, with a little bit of hiccup today, not sure why. Thank you guys for staying with me. If you want to stay connected and continue learning, do jump across onto Facebook, um, into the Social Media Academy Facebook group. Um, just search the Social Media Academy. There's lots of connection and opportunity for free learning and also some extended Facebook Lives. I do some exclusive conversation. Um, wonderful, you're welcome, Shah, no problem at all. Um, who doesn't love a bit of swag, Sarah? That's right. <laughs> cool. Guys, thank you so much for your attention. Um, the other thing we, we do, if you want to sign up, if you haven't signed up already, we do a monthly newsletter. We don't spam. Um, you can sign up and we send top tips, one tip a month. We tell you about free events, blogs, loads of good stuff. So we'll pop a link into the comments box as well. Pippa, you are really more than welcome. Thank you so much for, for coming back and sticking with us. And for your attention, next week, I don't know what we're going to do. What's on the cards next week? Maybe we'll continue with the Instagram theme and talk about Instagram stories. Let me know if that's of interest. Um, pop them in the comments box below. What other slide decks did I have that I could go through? We've got someone ads. Um, we've got uh, Instagram 202 or 102 or something like 201, the next step up. I'll have a look. I'll have a look. But if you all head over into the Social Media Academy, um, we'll run a poll maybe and see what you guys want. And then um, we can run that one next week. So same time next week, two o'clock Wednesday. Fingers crossed, be live or good to me and we don't lose sound. Um, thanks, guys. Thanks so much. And I will hope you all have a wonderful bank holiday weekend. Uh, stay in touch and see you soon. Take care. Bye.